Today, we're going to be airbrushing purple, and we're going to show you some of those ancient Chinese tricks. Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here, next level painting, hitting you up on the literal best of all days, up here in the Beats Laboratory in the Hollywood Hills. I got another painting tutorial for you. Today, we're going to be focusing on purples. Purple is a big part of the Yujing Infinity project we've been working on. I figured I'd share some of the knowledge with you guys. Some real easy tricks to painting your purple. With an airbrush, a little bit of wash mixed in, I'm gonna show you how to get it looking good. You can apply this to tactical space marines, uh, vehicles, uh, all manner of things. Now you can take it to any level you want. Obviously go back, check all the videos. We got hundreds of them now. I Many of them show you how to edge highlight, how to get that, you know, extra scratch effect, anything you want. Today, I'm simply just showing you an easy way to build up your purples and how to make it interact with a wash in a real interesting way. Real simple stuff. I want to thank everyone who's been following along with the Yujing project and the Panosha project, all this Infinity stuff we're doing. I know it's a little off topic because we typically stick to the Warhammer 40k scene, but the hobby is so all encompassing. I'm really happy that you guys are following along at home, but don't forget to check out the Twitch live stream. I do one scheduled stream every Tuesday. That's 9 p.m. for the East Coasters, that's 6 p.m. for the West Coasters. And I try to do an unscheduled, like kind of surprise broadcast some point in between. We're still working on 40K. We're actually primarily focusing on the Orc Army, my personal Orc Army. We've got sponsors, we got Cromley, we got Puppets War, we got Secret Weapon Miniatures and many more to come soon. So if you want to get your 40K fix and you're missing out on that, you can obviously see them here published on YouTube, but obviously you get you miss something if you don't watch it live. So definitely go over to my Twitch channel, next underscore level underscore painting, follow it. You'll get a notification every time we go live. Anyway, I want to do a quick roll call and shout out some of my patrons. Let's shout out a couple clutch individuals. I got Glenn, Kyle, Frederick, Jared, Matt, and of course, you can't forget Jackson. For you guys at home who don't know, Patreon is my personal crowdfunding page. It's a way to interact with me in a way that provides me with little financial security. I use 100% of the money to put it back into the process to keep the tutorials rolling. You gain ad-free exclusive and early access over on the Patreon page. You get to see things before they come out here. You get to see them ad-free and there's several videos that I never publish here. I wanna thank all of my patrons for the continued support. Anyway, let's jump right into this video. All right, let's do this thing, guys. Here are the three major colors that are gonna be making up this effect. And of course, always get an Iwata Eclipse airbrush. It's the best in the business. Can't leave home without the airbrush flow improver. These are gonna be the fundamental tools of attaining this effect. Now, right here, what we got is this interesting like backpack, squirrel suit, dealy. This comes on the Tiger Soldiers from the Yujing faction in Infinity. We got a prime black, you know, didn't overthink it. Got it pinned up to a quirk, no big deal. And we're just laying a couple of thin coats of the purple. That's just standard Vallejo game color purple. It's a great color, I love it. I use it for a lot of things. I use it for Emperor's Children. I use it for all those cool purples and pinks I do on my chaos. Solid color all around and pretty good coverage. I mean, that's just one or, that's like, I think that's just one coat right there. You can see it's pretty solid, good coverage especially for a black primer and a relatively brighter pigment. All right, now here is that trick I like to employ. We're gonna mix pink in with the purple. And we're gonna use this to highlight any one of these furls on these like petals, as it were. I don't know what to call those. What, I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go with petals. <laughs> so we're gonna use uh, 
We always use the dark color that we just used kind of mixed into the highlight color so they can have a common color. That's actually what an ancient Chinese technique, like that's old as time. And this also helps you create a very subtle transition that helps you eliminate the speckling, the abrupt, you know, transitions that you see in other airbrush work that you're like, ah, I don't know how I feel about airbrushing. It doesn't look that good. That's kind of one of the tricks right here to avoiding it. That and using your flow improver. So we got a pretty good fade. Now we're going to grab some of that white. We're going to mix it with some of that pink, kind of loosely slap it into our pot with some of that other crap in there, you know, not even overthinking it. If you have any questions, definitely check out the airbrush hacks video uh, because it's the gangster gumbo, baby. So we're gonna just drop off, download a couple of, you know, brighter highlights on the ends of these petals. Don't overthink it, just be quick. You know, I'm not a scientist, I don't know how light works. I just try to create interesting transitions. All of this is gonna be moot in just a few seconds because I am gonna gloss coat this thing. I am gonna throw a wash on this thing. This is one of my tricks and you know, I'm getting ahead of myself so I'll let the video play toward that. And you see I'm focusing keeping the tip clean you know i keep my trusty you know toothbrush near me so i can brush some of the white off the tip of the airbrush because white has the biggest tendency to get that un you know that undesired speckling that i was talking about just a minute ago so there it is real simple nice little pastels fun little pinks mixed into our purples and here it is this is just some vallejo acrylic gloss and some airbrush thinner i'm not going to waste time showing you that process gloss it on let it dry come back to it and we're going to use this i want to say it's like pretty much a red wash from gw but i think i got a little bit of the purple wash mixed into it and i'm going over the gloss and i'm gonna go middle medium heavy and we're letting this wash just find all the deepest recesses the idea here is that this works really well in like tactical marines uh other you know pretty heavily detailed items because what this wash is going to do is it's going to find all the areas that you want to be dark and all the, and it's going to wick away from all the areas you want to be bright. And we kind of gave it a little bit of help with the airbrushing, you know, working away from it a little bit darker to a brighter color. We did that real fast. Like I said, that's why I told you not to overthink it because we're undoing a lot of those transitions right now. The idea of the gloss coat was to, you know, first step, protect your pewter model. Second step, help with this washing process. We're going to put it down. We're going to let it dry for a few minutes. And we're going to come back to the original mix. We're going to pull out that purple. We're going to pull out that pink. And we're going to begin highlighting all over again. But here is the, is the trick. More water, more flow improver than you were using before. We're going on ultra thin, super thin, almost ghost tint thin. We're trying to create a transparent transition so that we can maintain some of those wash uh, transitions. So that wash will really kind of just be hidden under our very thin airbrush application and it's really going to help create a lot of detail and like contrast and i mean later i'll go back in and highlight this but you don't have to i mean if, if you're just trying to get it to the tabletop go on okay now this is this is reverse people don't even know sometimes i do this i'm grabbing the darker purple and i'm going to go back in there and i'm going to rebuild the purple in some of the dark areas because the dark color interacts with the light color a totally different way then the light color going over the dark color. So I want that true purple to get popped back out. So I'm re-blending it in super thin, like we just talked about, back over some of those transitions. And that'll create a more true purple, less of a pastel. Now this is ancient next level painting technique right here. Grabbing some Prussian blue, we're gonna mix it in with that purple, ultra thin, like I was saying, almost a ghost tint. And we're gonna drop some off at the very, you know, deepest points of the transition to make it super violet like this is one of those tricks the more colors in the uh, in the transition the more exciting it is that's kind of why we use an airbrush because if you were just going to use dark purple and then add white to it like that would suck it'd be boring that's why we're going with purple pink white and even prussian blue mixed into it And what we got here is a nice looking piece. Lots of transitions and lots of fun interactions. That is the name of the game when you airbrush. You wanna create those fun transitions. Anyway guys, thanks for checking out this video. As always, play on, players. If you like these tutorials, check out Next Level Painting on Patreon. 
Become a patron of the arts today. We offer early and exclusive access to our videos and a rewards program for different pledge levels. Patreon is PayPal and credit card secure, so you don't have to worry about that. We use 100% of the money to improve our process.